afternoon to everyone here and good morning to our Western Australian counterparts. Welcome to the Workflow Webinar. I'm Charissa and with me is my team member Rowan. Hey everyone, how's it going? Yep. So today we're going to show you how to set up some quick and easy workflow actions. Most of you are already Accelerate clients. I know some of you are not using Accelerate right now, but hopefully this will be a nice introduction for you. This webinar will be focused on the how-tos. We've, uh, we've received the questions yet sent through via the sign-up page and we'll be responding to these questions via a follow-up email, so stay tuned for that. So let's start off by explaining what Workflow is all about. Uh, Workflow is a powerful automation engine in Accelerate. Do note that these features are only available in the Turbo license. And the major benefit of Workflow is to automate your manual tasks and accelerate, saving you time and stress. So if you're trying to work something um, via a person, Workflow is going to change all that. Uh, we get a lot of questions from clients all the time. Uh, what is the difference between scheduled and event-triggered workflow? So essentially, workflow actions comes uh, in two types, scheduled and event-triggered. Scheduled allow workflow to run at a specific time. It could be a one-off date and time or linked to a recurring schedule. So broadly speaking, any workflow relating to reports requires schedules. Event trigger workflows run based on an event in the system occurring, such as an enrollment or a commencement date. Uh, most of our workflow actions are, in fact, event triggered. So yeah, the main difference is effectively between either having something happen routinely on a schedule or having Accelerate act in response to something being triggered by it. Um, to give you a bit more of an idea of that, we do have a few examples listed here of the uh, different kinds of things you can automate. Now, we won't be covering all of these today, but just to give you a little idea of what you could potentially do with this, you can have things such as automated survey send outs, um, you can automate your integrations with LMS systems, you can also automate the, um, the handling of really fiddly stuff like sending out payment plan invoices, that can also be done with the workflow engine with the use of triggered or scheduled tasks. So. As I'm sure as I mentioned, we'll be covering most of the basics today to get you acquainted with it. And in our part two of this session, we'll actually be looking at some of those more advanced features, how you can build them in Accelerate. All right, so let's get started with the first workflow example. Yep, and that one yep. is going to be... This one. So the first workflow example we're going to look at setting up um, is how do you send a saved report to users in within Accelerate or any other contacts? Um, so it could be, you know, class enrollment reports, progress reports, etc. to members of your team. And uh, as this is a scheduled workflow, we're going to look at setting up a schedule first in Accelerate. So let's see how to do that. You may have done this manually with like downloading a report and sending it via Outlook. You can actually just have Accelerate send it straight for you, but you need to schedule it and decide when that's going to happen. So let's jump into the environment now. Okay. So the workflow setting sits under the cogwheel icon and jump down to workflow. If you can't see this here, that likely means that you uh, don't have access to the feature and you may not be on a turbo license. Yes. Alrighty, right. So to set up your schedule, they sit under automated tasks and schedules. Okay. So to set up a schedule, and as you can see, we have set up some already, just so you can get an idea of what a schedule is all about. And uh, to set up a new schedule, simply click on that plus icon on the very left. A little hard to see up here, but if we click on that. Yes, it's a bit elusive. All right, so be taken to the schedule setup page where you can actually decide, do you want a daily, weekly, or monthly schedule? So with the daily schedule, it's quite a simple setup, but you can also have the option of setting up weekly schedules, which can be a bit more complex. So in this particular setup here, you can specify, I want this workflow to run every Friday or very specifically on a Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay, and for the monthly schedule, you can also set something complex up such as send this workflow or send this report out on the um, third Friday of every month or the second Tuesday of each month. You can even go by the day number as well if That's you can't right. worry about the date. Okay, so for this specific example, we're going to look at a daily schedule. And the first thing we're going to do is to specify a schedule name. 
And it is a good practice to make this as specific as possible. So we want to say that the uh, state, the occurrence as well as the time. So we're going to say daily at 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. With a description, it's optional. So you can choose to put a quick description if you want. Um, yep, at 800. Yep. Okay. Now moving down, the schedule start date defaults to whichever day you've set up the schedule. And the end date is unchecked. If you check it, uh, it will end on a certain date. If unchecked, this is an indefinite schedule. It will run forever. So this can be useful if you're doing, say, like an advertising run where you might want to send some messages for a given period of time, but then stop after a, a moment. For this one, we're going to run it indefinitely, so it's going to be sending this report basically constantly. That's right. Okay, so moving on, you can specify how often do you want to run this schedule. So you can say um, if you want the schedule to run every couple of days or you want to get this report every two days, then you would specify two days or it could be three or four days. But in this specific example, we want to run it every day. So it is important to put one day. Uh, you can also choose to run whether you want to run the report once a day or multiple times per day. We'll keep it once a day for now. It's pretty unlikely you would need a report sent that many times a day. Um, so we'll leave it as a once for now. Yep. And finally, key in the time of 8 a.m. And simply save schedule. Okay, so it's saved over here. Ready to use. Yes, and you can edit the schedule anytime you want. So let's look at setting up the first workflow. And that sits under automated tasks and click on new automated task. Okay, let's start off with giving our workflow a name. So this is a report that we want to be sent to uh, certain people on a daily basis. So daily enrollment report, for example. Yep. And you can give a description. So you might want to say um, who the report is for and why, why it's being sent out. Mm -hmm. Like so. All right. Now, you'll be asked to select a workflow action. So if you click on the drop down list, you will be presented with several different workflow actions ranging from workshops to accredited training to assessment, finance, um, et cetera, et cetera. However, in this particular example, we do want to select the Q safe report workflow action. This is quite a long list. So remember, you can type in this box to search for specific actions as well. And we'll click on that Q save report here. There we are. All right. Moving on, we then want to select a report of our choice. I think we have saved one previously. Yep. So we'll go ahead and pull that out there. Okay, let's do the all progress in progress students report. You can have a selection of whether you want the report to come through as a CSV file or PDF. So that's of your choice. Of course, we recommend CSV files. Mm -hmm. You can also potentially change the uh, filters being used for the report. Generally, we recommend not doing that. If you do need to change the filters, it's often better to modify the report itself in the save reports area. There's not too many situations where you need to change them in the workflow task itself. As you scroll down the page, you'll be led to the wizard. So the wizard will be asking you, um, who do you want to send the report to? All right, so in this case, we will click on the Run Wizard button. Now, you'll be taken to this page where the action should be Send Contact Template by default. If not, please ensure that it is a Send Contact Template action at this stage. And you can start keying in who you want to send the report to. So I can send it to myself. And you can select multiple people. So it can be sent to more than one people, person. If you're not seeing a name in that list, it probably means you need to add them as a contact into Accelerate. That's right. Now we're going to ignore the honor unsubscribed and the max array, uh, fields for now. And with you can also select whether you want the um, email to come with the template or just use our Accelerate default message. So at this point, we will recommend to keep this particular message template as default because it does contain a lot of the important dynamic fields that you will uh, the system will pull through and send to you via email. So it will contain the report name, the report type, as well as the actual report link where you can click on. Very important here. 
So as we scroll down, uh, the from field defaults to your API user, or you can always specify who you wish the report to be sent from. So you can say, I'm sending the report from myself to myself. Yep. And uh, with the subject, you can leave this as default and it says real report, or you can override it. We could uh, change that to please see. Excellent. And uh, then you just leave that and we'll fill in the report name. Um, just seeing in the chat, if anyone's having issues with uh, seeing some of the drop down menus from how it's displaying, we will be us uh, recording this session uh, and being able to send a download link through to uh, you guys. Hopefully, you'll get a better view of the um, interface if you're having issues now. Great. So once you're happy with all these settings, simply update step. Okay, at this stage, you'll notice that this has been transformed into an advanced workflow setup. Mm -hmm. And that's because um, Accelerate will do a couple of things. Step one, it's going to run the report that you've saved. And step two, it's going to send the report link to your um, selected recipients. So unfortunately, we can't have a single step for this. You can't simply send the report. You do have to set up and queue the report first before it can actually be sent out to anyone. Hence why this is gone into two steps. That's right. Now let's look at selecting the schedule. Yep. Okay, so when you click on the drop down list, you'll be presented with all the schedules you have saved. Uh, so that's why it's very important to rename or name your schedules accordingly because you can then select the one that you're wanting uh, to apply to this in this particular workflow. So we'll select daily at 8 a.m. And at this stage, you can choose to pause the workflow if you're not ready for it to run yet. Yep, that can be useful if maybe the report isn't finalized, so you need to fix it up before you uh, unpause and start this working. But effectively what will happen now is every single day at 8 a.m., the system will attempt to queue up the report and then immediately send it through to anyone, any of the recipients. And I think we set Charissa and myself to receive that. That's right, and simply save automated task. Go. Yep. So as you can see here, it's currently paused because that's how we have configured it. Um, but once you're ready for the report to run, you can simply click on that gray play button on the right. Yep. And now it's active. You can also pause it with the same button. So you can kind of build these initially and turn them on or off as needs be. Yep. And anytime you want to modify the workflow, simply click on the gray pencil edit icon to jump back into the workflow. All right, so this particular queue saved report workflow action that we've just demonstrated is very, very powerful. It can have endless possibilities uh, if you start thinking about it. So for example, you can set setup and send progress reports, enrollment and completion reports. You can also send out finance related reports to the finance manager to let them know of how many invoices are outstanding or how many invoices need to be paid off or have been paid. Yeah, if you're running any reports in Accelerate already and you're finding you're sending them manually via Outlook, then this is probably a better method to just have it be done for you. Yeah. All right. So let's have a look at the next workflow. Yeah, so that will be this one here. Okay. So in the second workflow we want to demonstrate today, we're going to show you how to quickly set up a reminder email to your trainers and students about their upcoming workshops. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up a new workflow by simply hovering over automated tasks and click on new automated task. Now this is going to be a event triggered uh, workflow. So we actually don't need a schedule for this one. So we can jump straight into just creating it. That's right. So it's triggered off a workflow, uh, a workshop. Mm -hmm. So we'll give an according name, a uh, name accordingly. So such as, you know, today's reminder. workshop reminder, perfect. Descriptions once again is optional. Okay, so before session starts, for yep. example. Excellent. And in the uh, action area, let's click on the drop down list. And in this particular example, we want to select one specific workflow action called send workshop template. So you can type the workflow action as well. You can type it into the text field rather than scrolling up and down to locate it. 
Yeah, we'll click that send workshop template now. Okay, as we scroll down, by default, it actually sends it out to participants. When you click on the drop down list, you can see that there are other options of sending it out to trainers as well as uh, clients or any other contact within Accelerate. We'll leave it as participant for now. Yep. And uh, very importantly, in the field below, you will have to select the participant status of enrolled. And let's specify it as enrolled because we do not want to send this uh, reminder to cancelled or completed students. Yeah, if you're cancelled, you probably aren't going to show up for the session. So you don't need a reminder for it. We only want to send those reminders to enrolled participants. Okay. So um, let's ignore the honor unsubscribed and max our fields for now. Mm -hmm. And let's move on to the template area. So we do recommend that um, you select a or pre-configure template. And in this scenario, we have created one earlier called the student notification template. So we um, mentioned to not use a template during the report link send out, which is generally fine. That's mainly the exception for most all other workflow tasks, you'll probably want to use a template where possible. Yeah, and the advantage of using a template is because it also contains dynamic fields. You can set it up that way so that it pulls in the workshop information, such as the workshop dates, the times, the mm. location, and any other information you wish. All right, so uh, with the from and subject field, once again, it defaults to either the API user or the template name. So you can always override these settings to something of your choice. So we could have the email subject say you have an upcoming session instead. Otherwise, it would use that template name up above. Yep. Okay, awesome. Cool. All right, scrolling down, let's set the trigger. So this is an event triggered workshop as we explain our workflow as we explained earlier. Uh, so we want to change workshop created to workshop start date because it's actually being triggered of the start date of that particular workshop. Mm -hmm. Now we're, go we're going to work backwards from here in this setting. So chain let's change after to before. There we go. Okay. And you also have a selection of days, hours, and weeks for the reminder to be triggered. In this example, we're going to say days, and we'll type in two days. So you can see from this particular uh, drop-down list options that you can set up lots of triggers that happens, you know, when the workshop ends or, you know, when the workshop was created. Mm -hmm. So lots of different options before and after. Let's have a look at conditions. All right, so when you click on add condition, yep, so you have the drop down list and let's click on that drop down list. All right, so you want to set conditions if you're wanting the workflow to be applied to a specific workshop type or workshop coordination type. So for example, if we had no condition here, it would send this template to any workshop ever if it's two days before it's due to start. So you may want to restrict this down. For example, if you're running internal in-house sessions that you don't need to bother sending a reminder for, you may want to exclude them from this message send out. So what we could do for that is we could add in a condition, workshop coordination type, and say, well, let's exclude any workshops that have in-house delivery. So only the public enrollments, the public workshops will get sent that message two days beforehand. So it's important to keep conditions in mind to make sure that your triggers aren't, you know, sending messages to the wrong people because on their own, they're quite broad. Conditions can be used to sort of strip and pair that back. That's right. So in this particular example, we actually want the reminder to go out to every student, mm -hmm. regardless of workshop type. Um, so we are not going to apply any conditions in this case. Remove that. So any workshop at all now should get that reminder sent to its students. Yep. And once you're happy with the settings, you simply save automated task. There we go. All right. And there we go. That's been set up. All right. So now, one, now you've set up the workshop reminder for students. What happens when you also want to remind trainers about their upcoming sessions? So rather than create a separate workflow or a new workflow action, we're going to show you a way or a little hack to actually capitalize on your current workflow that you've just set up. Mm. So let's jump back into that same workflow again by clicking on the pencil icon. All right, as we scroll down to the what to run area, we're going to transform this single step task to an advanced workflow step. So 
So I'll just click this. Okay. So over here, you can see on this page that it contains the settings that you've set up earlier. So this is the one that you've set up for students. But if we're going to add one for the trainer, we can simply add a new stamp. So I'll click that there. Yep. And with the action, just ensure that it is set to the same uh, action with the students, which is send workshop template. So that's important to note. We also might want to rename this step to make mention that this is meant to be going to the trainer. Trainers, that's right. Okay. And then in the, the two field, we want to swap this from participants to trainer. There we go. Yep. Once again, we skip the honor and max fields. And with the template area, we want to specify a, a pre-configured template, which we have done, done, done one up earlier. As you can see, it's generally helpful to have your templates built before you start setting up any workflows. That's correct. So once again, the same theory applies, same concept applies from subject. If you wish to overwrite these fields, feel free to go ahead and do that at this stage. Otherwise, if you're happy with all the settings, simply update step. All right, now you can see from this page that this is now a two-step process. So step one, what Accelerate will do is it will send the workshop template to all students. And step two, it will then send the reminder email to the trainers. So we have two actions and they're both being triggered by the same thing. So the way this is working, two days before a workshop starts, the system will attempt to send the reminder to the students, this step number one. If that is successful, it will then move on and attempt to send a reminder onto the trainers. Something to keep in mind with these advanced workflows is this on failure condition. You can see that both of these steps are set if they ever fail to move to the exit fail, which basically means it'll stop the workflow task. This could be an issue. For example, if it tried to send a message to a student, but then couldn't for whatever reason, like if they were missing email addresses, it would consider that a failure and then the entire workflow may stop. Uh, and that means your trainers wouldn't get their reminders. So what we'll do, we'll change this failure condition for step one to also move to the next step. So if for whatever reason it can't send a message out to the students, it will still attempt to move on and at least send the reminder to the trainers. So just keep these sections in mind for advanced workflows to make sure that steps aren't being skipped or left out needlessly because they might fail for some reason. All right. All right, so with that, let's save the automated task. Okay. And that's how you kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, two actions in the one automation. Okay, now let's look at the third workflow. Yep, which is going to be... All right. So how do you go about sending an automated student cancellation email when a student who is currently in progress has been changed to cancel? I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so let's Jump. do this by setting up a new workflow action. So new automated task. Again, this is an event triggered task, so we just yep. don't need a schedule for it. That's correct. So in the name, once again, we will name this accordingly. So, you know, cancellation notice email, thereabouts. So message cancelled students. Yep. Okay. As we scroll down, we then select the action. Now, in this particular example, we want to select a very specific action called send class template because this workflow is being triggered of a class enrollment. Class enrollment is generally being used for full accredited training, whereas the workshops are more for just face-to-face -face instances. So we're going for classes this time. Yep. So once you select this workflow action, as we scroll down, it defaults to participant. And with the template... Yep. Yep, so we'll leave it at that for now. Yep, and with the template, we have pre-configured one earlier, so it's always very handy to use a pre-configured template for workflows. There we go. Yep. Uh, the from field defaults to the API user, and the subject defaults to the template. So you can over always overwrite the settings at this stage if you wish. Mm -hmm. All right, so with class template workflow actions, uh, you will see lots of different options you can choose from under the triggers. So you can trigger this of a, a particular enrollment date, commencement date, or even the actual completion date. So this allows you to have lots of possibilities in thinking what sort of workflow or email triggers you want to send. Say every time a student enrolls, send this email. Every time a student completes a course, send that email. 
In this particular example, we want to um, base this off an enrollment status change. So we're going to select that option here. There we go. All right. When you do this, this essentially allows workflow or what Workflow will do is every time a student's enrollment status changes, regardless of what it was, what the old one was and what the new one is, it's going to trigger off this cancellation email, which does not make sense. So in order for this email to be sent to the correct recipient at the correct trigger, we need to add conditions at this time. Let's include a condition. So the first con condition that we want to set is what we call the new participant status. And once again, so you can see all the different options within the conditions. You can set this trigger based on a qualification or say a um, particular class. So lots of options to choose from. We'll keep the participant status for now. We want this to apply to any student at all if their status changes. Yeah. <coughs> all right. So with the new participant status, let's specify includes cancelled. Yep. Okay, so what this means is every time a student's status is changed to cancelled from a previous current existing status, workflow will start kicking off and send that cancellation email. All right. However, that's not the end. Uh, we still want to make sure that we do not send this cancellation email to say a student who is tentatively enrolled because if they're tentatively enrolled that means their enrollment is not confirmed uh, and they you know they're not officially uh, enrolled into the training yet so you might cancel them go from tentative to cancelled and then they get sent that message and it's like well <clears throat> I didn't even start the training so that doesn't make too much sense so we want to put a different uh, condition in here as well yeah. so let's add a new condition and this time we're going going to select participant status okay so essentially what it looks at participant status is this the students existing current status <clears throat> and we're going to specify one that's in progress yeah so another way to look at this is this is a status they used to have this new one is the status they now currently do so what they were changed from into what they were changed to so now with those conditions it will only send this template if you move an in-progress student to a cancelled status that's right and once you're happy with all the settings simply save automated task you can probably see from this layout this can power a lot of different other automations for example you could have moving from in progress to completed to send a completion reminder you could even have it move from tentative to uh, in progress to send maybe a course confirmation letter automatically this is quite a flexible uh, trigger so long as you make use of the right status uh, conditions yep all right let's save the automated task i'll just return that back oh, to yeah, what it that's was right. and there we go okay Brilliant. Excellent. Okay, let's look at, so that wraps up the third workflow. And let's look at our final workflow setup of the day. So this will be a, a more complicated uh, workflow. So far we've been looking at things that have been using triggers within the workflow engine or just sending off a save report. In this one, we're going to be looking at a unique uh, trigger called report row event. So occasionally you may find that the triggers are simply not sophisticated enough to get your automations working. The solution for that is to effectively use Accelerate's report build as a kind of mailing list. If you can get a list of students, names, invoices, you name it, in a report, you can probably plug that into the workflow and have it do things in response to that. What we'll look at today is a way of doing that so that you can just get a list of all your active students and fire off a big one-off bulk email for them. You might want to like alert them about the COVID situation, for example. Easiest way to do that is via the workflow engine. So we'll jump back into the system. And yeah, there we go. Back to it. So for this, we're going to take a look at a report we've actually built earlier. So we'll jump into save reports. And the one in question is this all in progress students. We'll click the play button next to it just to have a view of it. Uh, if you have any questions about building reports in Accelerate, you can check out our help guides on the report builder. It'll list that out in more detail. You can see this is a very simple workflow. Uh, sorry, not workflow, uh, report. It's just a class enrollments, meaning it's looking at your accredited enrollments in the system and has a single filter. It just says, show me everyone who currently has an in-progress status. We just want a list of all those current students. 
To make sure that this can actually be used by the workflow engine though, we do have to be careful about how we've set this up, mainly in the display fields. So we'll click on through there. So an important thing to understand with the workflow engine is that although we can see things like names and email addresses in these results, the workflow engine must work off of ID numbers. That's what it actually sees. So we've put into these display fields the contact ID, uh, and that will list a number against each student. And workflow can see that and understand who the people are. So we've put in that display field, and if we hit done and run this report, we should be able to see on the left-hand side that contact ID is listed there. So the action we'll be using in the workflow engine is called report row event. It is named as such because what it will effectively do is it will look at these report results and for every row that it finds, it will perform an action, an event. So in order to make sure it can actually read the row, we need to put in that contact ID so it can understand who it is. Otherwise it'd have no idea what students listed on there. It can only work off the IDs. So if you don't have IDs in there, um, that will cause issues later. So do be careful when you're setting up your reports to make sure you respect the IDs. That's right. And um, I think a lot, of, a lot of us are very used to Microsoft's mail merge uh, feature, which allows us to set the email address in the template. However, with Accelerate's workflow, we do not actually base it off. Uh, you do not require an email address column in the report. Mm -hmm. What it actually looks at is the contact ID as Rowan has just explained. Yep, precisely. The last thing to do is to also make sure that your reports are saved. Um, if they aren't saved, there's nothing for the workflow to reference. And while saving them, um, we'll go into there. Just remember to also share it internally. Um, if you don't share your reports, the workflow engine uh, simply just can't see them. So two things to mainly remember with reports is to put IDs in the display fields and to share them internally. Those are the key things to make it usable by the workflow engine. We've already built this report, so we'll jump right back into workflow and we'll see about how we can use that to send a message to all those in-progress students. We'll create a new workflow task and we'll just call this one, you know, like, you know, stay COVID safe, just a quick message to send to all students about the uh, current quarantine situation. And like always, we put in an optional description, but we won't uh, bother too much in this case as it's kind of going to be a one-off thing. In the action, the one we want to use this time is the send contact template. So far, we have looked at the send workshop template um, for workshop related things, send class template for class related things. This is just a generic information going to you know, people. It's not really specifying what they're rolled into. So we're gonna use the very basic send contact template. Further down, we have the two contacts field and we're actually gonna disregard that for now. That'll fix itself up later. We're just gonna continue down and put in a template there first and foremost. And here's one we had prepared earlier, just a simple message of staying COVID safe. And down the bottom, we are going to go to our trigger type and select what I mentioned before, the report row event. Excellent. Once you do that, you will then have to select a report. So we'll choose the one we saved earlier, all in progress students. And if you can't see your report on that list, that's, that's your hint. You probably haven't saved it or you just haven't shared it internally. Now that we've plugged that in, do note that the two contact section has actually changed. It is now saying report data, contact ID. So effectively what is happening is when this workflow runs, it will check the report, look at all the results, and for every row that it finds on that report, it will look at the contact ID and try and send a template to that person. So we've effectively turned that report into a giant mailing list for Accelerate to use in its workflow engine. If you get to this stage and you see that that dropdown doesn't say anything, it's got like a none in there, that's your hint you probably haven't put the display field in the report itself. And that, yeah, you can go back, you'll have to fix your report and then just rebuild the workflow. Lastly, we'll just decide when we want this to run. You could potentially put a schedule in for this, but because this is sort of a one-off ad hoc email, we'll just put in a date and time of our choosing here. So I'll just run it today and we can put it up to send sometime in the afternoon like so. A word of advice when doing that, if you do do that one off time, try not to set it too close into the future. For example, it's basically 135 now. I wouldn't recommend putting a 145 in here. There's a chance that the workflow engine may miss it if that's the case. Your safest bet is to probably set it maybe one hour in the future. So if we put it like 1445, 245 p.m., then it'll definitely be picked up. Um, if you put it too close to the current time, it, it may get skipped, especially when it's a one-off thing like this. 
With all that in place, the report or event, the report set, our time and template, we can then save the automated task. And you'll see that's now sitting in there ready to go. So on report event. So come 245, it will run that report, check through it. And as mentioned, every time it comes across a row, it will attempt to send that template off to the contact ID that it finds in the row. Yep, and with that said, uh, the report row event trigger is very versatile. Uh, it can power the more advanced workflow actions that you may desire. So once again, the possibilities are simply endless. So um, we've got lots of examples we can think of, such as first aid providers. If you're a first aid provider and you have certain units um, which expire, have a certain expiry date and you want to send uh, a reminder to students about their expiring um, unit coming up, you can use the report row event for that. Yeah, exactly. Often a lot of, as mentioned, some of the triggers and things are not really that sophisticated in workflow, but if you can go to Accelerate's Report Builder and create a report there, that thing can then power those things. We have a unit enrollment report. That's the best way to check expirations um, on those you know, first A units, which expire, I think, every six months. And then you can send out reminders based on that. It's also an area you can do things to say like invoices. A lot of things about raising or sending invoices out of the system also rely on that report row event uh, send out. Um, That's right. Additionally too, some of those like class status changes or reports on those, um, sometimes the triggers just aren't specific, can't get the conditions to work. You can use a class enrollment report to get a similar result with uh, more specific outcomes. Yep. We'll be covering a lot of this in the second uh, part of this uh, sort of webinar series. So we've looked at some very basic workflows today, but come our next webinar, we'll be looking at some of those more specific ones, including, as I mentioned, how to have invoices sent out of the system. That too relies on the report row event uh, action. Yep. So if you're excited to start exploring the report raw event uh, feature, don't forget that you can still, for Accelerate users, you can jump into our shots for lots of short videos about on how to set this up. So that's the short hits of training. And we've got some pre-recorded uh, short videos that show you how to set up certain um, what do you call it, report raw event triggers. Yeah, very popular ones, including for example, that unit expiry one. We have a dedicated shot for that, but you can uh, see how we built it, similar to what we've done today. Yep, and that's a wrap. So with this part one, we've covered some very simple actions of workflow, and in part two, as Rowan mentioned, we'll be moving on to the more advanced areas. So do watch out for our emails, it's coming up shortly, and we'll see you then. Yep. All right. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, we'll try and get through those responses fairly soon. And yep. for those people we haven't answered in the chat, we will try and collate your responses where possible and uh, also respond in uh, via email. Yeah. So thank you so much for your time for joining us for this webinar and we'll see you next time. Bye.